All right, perfect. Welcome to our green reading class here at beautiful Glen Wild Golf Club in Park City, Utah. Thanks for coming. Um, this particular class is just going to be on understanding how to read greens. Uh, we're going to record this for everybody at home so they can watch it on the YouTube channel. When you get up onto the putting green, um, the most important thing to do, you've hit your shot into the green, and even at that moment in time, you can be scanning and surveying what it is that's coming next, right? You've hit this beautiful shot up onto the green. The last thing we want to do is mess up the good drive, the good approach with a three or a four putt. So we want to try to make sure that we're reading it well. So the sun's going to be intermittent in and out, but I've got the camera positioned and, and for your viewing pleasure, you can see the shiny section and then you can actually see over here a darker section. Notice that where it gets darker. So one of the first things that you can do from a distance is see the coloration, right? So we're gonna just kind of walk over the hill over here and I'm gonna show you visually what you're gonna get to see. So come with me. So I like to kind of break this down into kind of see it, feel it, understand it. If you can do this better, uh, you'll, you'll read greens much at a much higher level. So come on all the way over. So I want us to kind of peek down into the green over here. So if you can look down into the green, you'll see there's shiny sections and then there's dark sections, right? So those dark sections is where the hill is sloping down toward us. The shiny silvery sections is where it's going away right so let's turn so follow me this way look back onto this green right so now if we see on the practice screen we can see over where my golf bag is we can see a darker color and then a silver color so we're going to take a walk and we're going to go around the green over here so just follow me here we have silver and dark right so as i kind of turn you can see it gets darker and then let's keep going all the way around the perimeter. As we go, it starts to change, right? So our perspective on where we are standing and what we see with our eyes gives us a lot of information. So keep coming. Now, you see right through the middle of this green, it's all pretty silver. Anytime you see silver, that means it's downhill. Anytime you see dark, that means you're putting uphill. All right, so let's keep going around here. So as we make this turn again, you can see that darker section across there, and then silver here. So we're on the opposite side of the green to where we were. When we turned over there, and I said, look back toward my bag, it was dark. Now we've come to the complete opposite side. So this is a perfect timing for the cloud to come <laughs> because it's not always sunny. And how sunny it is determines what we see. So we can still see a little light color change, right? And a little dark over there. So if you've got a putt now from here, from this location right where I stand, and you're putting down, you're putting downhill until it reaches here. So we're going to say that this is the bottom of the valley and then this is the, the other side of the valley, right? So if you think about nature in general, we have all these beautiful mountains and everything around us. Some of the misquotes that you're going to hear in green reading is that everything breaks away from that mountain. False, right? Everything breaks toward that lake or that low spot. False. Now. A droplet of water that lands here at Glenwild, right where I stand, come with me, is going to flow downstream and it's going to go all the way over here. And then there's a drainage pipe that was built, a drainage cap right down here in the bottom. And that it goes in there, it goes underneath the cart path underneath the driving range to a natural water wetlands area. 
It then makes a right-hand turn, goes down number three in the wetlands, meanders down to Bittner Road, comes all the way back around into that stream that runs in front of the clubhouse drive that comes up the hill, and then basically goes all the way down to Salt Lake, right? So from here, it made this tremendous curve. So there's no way that it's going from one location in a straight line, right? So we're dealing with these big environments with mountains, rivers. Here we have mountains, valleys, rivers. We have these little micro areas, right? So let's scoot back here to where we started. And then right here in this uh, cooler, I have some water, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna recreate a river. So Mark, come on over here, right to here, right? So kind of right where you're standing here is the top of the mountain, right? We already, I already explained kind of where the water goes. Now we're gonna visually watch it, right? So as I pour this out of the cooler, uh, I'll go back here a little bit. Okay, let's watch this go. All right, so water is flowing out. The downpour of rain, just all the water just landed right here. And then we're creating this river system, right? So the reason why we're doing this is because when we just talked about grain is really what we're talking about. We're talking about coloration. And when the cloud came over and blocked the sun, we started to lose the coloration. So on an overcast day, we can use the visualization of what water does. Let's go down the hill and follow that river, right? So right from where I poured that, it's giving us a general idea. We've got two little streams running, one big river, another little stream. Now come on down here, right? So at this point right here, just go right there, Mark. So right here, what we have is an exit point for that water. So when the architect was designing the green, they shaped it in such a way to move water around, right? So as you move water with the shaping of the soil, you're doing several things. One, you're creating contours for golfers to create a challenge. Another thing you're doing is you're protecting the, the plant itself, okay? So we have an A4 bent grass green here. This is a very, you know, small leaf a very tiny little root system. And, and what happens is if you get a ton of moisture building up like a puddle, it rots, right? So come on over here, Mark, come down here and take a look at this right here, All right? So here what we have essentially is some like fungus, some rotting soil, right? Now we don't really care that much about it right here because it's in the rough. But if we start to get that spotting up and all of that happening over here on the green, then we're gonna have a problem. So let's, let's kind of pan down this way onto the green. So if you look at what we've got is we've got an upper level right here on the putting green. Then we have a drain in between these two greens. And then we have a lower green. So the architect has designed and shaped the ground so that the water doesn't flow from this green directly onto that one because then we'll get excess water there, which should, could cause that, that rotting nature, right? So let's look at it with reflection, because reflection is grain. So if you look at my hand like this, it's the shaded side of my hand, right? So as you're looking at grass and you see the dark coloration, what you're actually seeing is the shaded side of under, underneath that leaf, right? Now, if I tip my hand this way, now you can see the contrast, now it's shiny. So the leaf itself is reflecting the light better when it's growing away from us like this. And when it's growing toward us, it's creating a shadow. So whenever you see dark, that means that you're looking at something that's going uphill. Whenever you see something shiny, that means it's going downhill, 
right? Now grass is only going to grow in the direction of where it's seeking water and nutrients. There's another myth out there that gra grass follows the setting sun, right? You've been told that too, right? So you think about, you know, let's say it's more like a Hawaii or something like that. You got a robust grass. They have a paspalum grass. They've got Bermuda grass. And you picture, you know, the grain kind of following the sun. It just doesn't. It just doesn't do that. It always follows where water and nutrients are, right? So you see with your eyes, you comprehend water flow. And then the last thing you do is you understand through the feel, right? So what we're going to do is feel with our feet. So I'm going to grab this right here. Let's go over here. So right here, follow me. We're clearly walking uphill. We know this, right? So follow me up the hill. Walking, walking. Okay, now what I want you to do is right there, go backwards down the hill. Right? So you're going uphill, downhill there. I'm going to go uphill, downhill here. So we walk uphill. And then let's go downhill. Now what you're going to find in this walking style is that it's extremely apparent when you go backwards. Right? When you come uphill, it doesn't feel, or when you walk forwards, our bodies are kind of trained to make these little micro adjustments. When you go backwards, you can sense little, tiny little changes, right? So walk forwards, right? And now go backwards again, right? This feels like you're falling, right? So go ahead and turn now, turn the other way. Now walk up the hill backwards. You can feel like you have to push with your quads. You have to feel like you're moving. So here's what you do. Let's go over here and read this putt. All right, so let's go back to where we started. Okay, I'll let you adjust that, however, Mark. All right, so I'm going to get a golf ball out. Let's read a putt. All right, so here's my ball. It's landed on the green here. Can you get that in the picture? Okay. What do you see? <coughs> Visually, shiny, right? So the first thing that pops up, sun came out, we see this as a shiny section between my ball and the hole, right? Now, if I start walking and I walk forwards, I'm gonna create a circle. <coughs> I'm walking around the hole in a big circle. Right about here, I start to sense that I went downhill for a second. Then I get to here, and I, now I'm sensing that I'm going back up, right? It's harder. So I'm going to go backwards. Oh, yeah, I can feel that I'm falling to here. So that's definitely downhill. I feel like I'm actually going back up right here. So what would that tell me about the slope of this hill? It's kind of going that way, right? So this is right where I'm kind of going down. So then I come back here. Now I'm definitely going back uphill, right? So what you're going to see on professional golf is caddies and players kind of standing like this. And what they're doing is they're trying to feel with their feet that I'm, I'm, I'm leaning just a little bit to the left, okay? Other times you're going to see players standing right here. Well, now what I'm feeling is I'm, am I going heel or am I going toe? Right, well, I can feel a little bit more in the heel. So although it's shiny here, I'm not seeing a ton of darkness when I look this way. So visually, you would expect I'm going to see a lot of dark, right? If I was looking uphill, I don't really see it. When I come around onto this side, it's really hard to tell if there was a change. Definitely not as clear of a change as that. So what we're dealing with here, maybe only maybe a 1% slope, a very small number, um, not maybe a 4 or 5. Right? So you know when you're driving on the highway and it says warning, 6% grade, you know, that's telling you, hey, this is sloping down. So be careful, you're about to go downhill. 
Um, so considering I've read all of that, now I have to putt it. So I'm feeling like, okay, it's gonna be a very, very quick putt. It's coming downhill. It's moving right to left. So what I have to do is I have to try to figure out, you know, how far do I aim up top here, right? So there's one, well, there's two more things we're gonna to touch on. One is grain around the hole. And the other one is if I had a group of people putting with me, I could learn a lot from them, right? So Mark, bring that camera all the way over here. Okay, now we're gonna pull this out and I'm gonna get down here. You may not get to see it, so stay kinda probably on this angle right here. So here's what I wanna show you. Here's the eroded side of the cup, right? You can see on this side of the cup, it's kind of, the leaf is kind of falling in over the cup, right? This is all kind of busted, right? And it's breaking down kind of all in this section, right? Now here's what happens. So let's say if I kind of put my hand in this position, the cup cutter comes along and they punch a hole, right? So if I put my fingers kind of in this direction, if I took that cup cutter and chopped through my hand, I'm gonna cut off all the blood supply from my arm to these fingers, right? So these fingers are gonna dry up and rot. <laughs> kind of a horrific picture, but you get the idea. Blood flow, nutrients, etc., is being stopped from flowing in this direction because this is the high side and this is the low side. So when you look at a cup, if you see an intact side, kind of a nice smooth edge. And then you see a broken, eroded side. This is the downhill side. This is the uphill side, right? So this is gonna give me an indication of what that putt's gonna do. So if it was truly sloping up more in that direction, more of the erosion would be on this side than on this side. So what I'm seeing is I'm seeing more here. So that means this putt that I have is a very, very subtle putt, okay? So let's head back over there. So like I said, the next phase, hopefully you've hit a shot into the green and you're not the first person to putt, <laughs> right? So if you are the second person to putt, you get to learn something, okay? Now let's say the first person to putt is on this side. They're a little bit further away than you are. Okay, so player A sets up, they putt toward the hole. What did you see? I should have, or that player, because I never miss, right? That player <laughs> should have aimed over here. Well, they missed. When players who are playing with you miss putts, it's actually more important than when they make them. Because when they miss, you get to see the, the, the continuation of that roll, right? Now, from here, it came, was like it was gonna go in for a second, but then it turned away, right? So if you're nice, you'd be like, that's good, pick it up. So now, you've seen it with your eyes, the color. You've, you've understood that when you look for drainage ditches, you see where water goes, but we're kind of on a ridge. So it was a little bit confusing. We felt with our feet, we could feel it coming this way was a little uphill. This way was downhill. This way is definitely uphill. We could see the shininess. So we're computing all of this stuff into our mind, right? So now it's my turn to hit the putt. So because of what I saw with my eyes, felt with my feet, saw the other player do, I should have a really good chance of making this putt. If we made all of our putts, we'd be playing professionally on the tour, right? So when you set up here, I'm visualizing now a line in the ground that has a little curve to it, right? So what I'm gonna do is show you what my eye sees. So what my eye sees is this, a tiny little curve doing that. Can you see that in the camera? Yep. So what I did is I took my putter and I dragged it up the hill. 
which meant I was dragging it against the grain. Now this is not legal, <laughs> right? This would be against the rules. I'd be testing the surface. But what it does is it gives us a nice clear visual of what I think it's gonna do. So what I see in my eye is not a straight line. I always see these nice little curves on these breaking putts, right? So what I'm gonna do is get behind. I've kind of seen that curve, so now it's my turn to putt. I'm gonna set up following that curve. The reason why curves are better than straight lines is because when you see a straight line, there's no end. You just hit it on the straight line and you could just crush it straight line for 20 feet. When you see curve, it's like there's a little stopping point. You're like, okay, I can't hit this that hard. I've got to hit it just enough to get it onto the curve and then in. So let's go ahead and putt this one. So I'm setting up just to the right of the hole, kind of along that line that I saw. Then I'm gonna go ahead and putt it pretty gently down the hill. There we go, made it first time, all right? I should make a lot more putts if I take that time. Now, just like anything else, if you're learning a language, for example, and you've, you've learned how to say, buenos dias, right? But you don't say it every day. You might be thinking, is it bueno dias or buenos dias, right? So you're never gonna get it exactly right unless you practice it a lot. So the first thing you wanna start doing to improve your putting is really open your eyes to some of these little things that we're talking about. And then that's really gonna help you at least predict what's gonna happen on the ground. Execution's another story, right? So that's the second lesson, is how do we stand, how do we stroke, how do we release that putter so that we create the best roll. But you can have a beautiful putting stroke if you don't understand how to read this stuff, it's gonna be very challenging, okay? So hopefully you enjoyed that clinic out here at Glen Wild. Let's turn and show everybody the mountain. All right, such a great view. We've got a great property out here. Hopefully you enjoy this video and hopefully this helps you make more putts.